Okay, so continuing on the topic of web security and cookies, we're going to talk about session management. So when you log into a web server, this is typically how it works is you, um, you know, click in the login button. The web server will say, okay, well, authenticate yourself, prove that you are who you say you are. What's your password or, you know, authentication tokens or whatever else. If you satisfy the web server that yes, you are who you say you are, then your session cookie um, is basically bound to your identity and they say, okay, uh, well now we know that the, the web browser that exists out in the world that has this session cookie is this person because we've checked. And each time you go back to that web page, um, your browser sends along that session cookie again and therefore the server is happy that you are who you say you are. So basically, it, it binds that session ID to your identity and um, tracks that on the server side. <clears throat> because that's the way it works, if you can steal someone's cookie, then you have access to their account. So if I walked up to someone's computer that's been left logged in and I open up their web browser and view their cookies, uh, if I just copy their session cookie for Facebook and then wander back to my computer and type that in, um, then I will find myself logged into Facebook with their account because the way that the authentication works is that as long as you've got that session cookie, you are that person. Um, and we'll talk about some defenses uh, in a little bit, but essentially that's the how uh, how it works. Now, it's worth saying that um, using cookies for session management is one of the better ways you can do you can do it. There's not really uh, most of the alternatives are, are worse. And so, for example, um, you know th there are security features which we'll talk about in a minute, which you can use to kind of secure cookie cookies, um, and it makes it a good option. If you instead um, put the session ID into a URL parameter, that's, you see that sometimes on a website, you'll see you know, the um, web page that you're at, the address, and then it will say that ID equals, and you'll see a session ID there. That's worse because um, you know, it's sent in the clear and it's in the browser history and all sorts of things. And you can put them in hidden form fields, uh, in proprietary headers, and, and other mostly bad options. Um, some websites will actually accept more than one session ID exchange mechanism, so you can test that when you're looking at the security of a website. You could look at whether or not something that's being sent in a cookie could have been sent in a URL parameter, for example. And because that's how cookies work, um, if you have an insecure web connection, so if you're using um, an unsecure uh, just HTTP request, so you're not using HTTPS with you know, SSL, TLS encryption, um, then anyone who's eavesdropping on the network can see all the cookies because you know, HTTP is a plain text protocol. Um, if you are listening in, eavesdropping on the network, you can just see all of the headers that are flying across. And so, for example, if you're on an open Wi-Fi network, like at a cafe, and you use their internet there, anyone else who's at the same cafe on that same open network, if they're on a website that is on an unencrypted connection, then all their session cookies will be in the clear. And anyone else on that network can just see them and um, copy them and get access to those accounts. So there used to be a um, Firefox extension called Firesheep. And you could load it up, and basically what it will show you is it'll just automatically pop up with all of the um, all the sessions that it's detecting on the network. And if you're in a cafe environment with an open Wi-Fi network, you could just see all the people that are logged in on Facebook, and you could just click on one of those, and it'll take you straight through logged into that person's Facebook account. Now, since then. Um, Facebook has moved to using HTTPS 
by default. And a lot of websites, or most websites, are doing that because it's the right thing to do. Um, but it, it really demonstrates how important it is that you're using an encrypted connection. Because if you don't, that's how easy it is to steal someone's account, to hijack their session. And if you... Um, um, if you don't have a, you know, if you don't have an encrypted connection, it's it, it's bad news. So you should you should always make sure that websites, any website that has like sessions and things, should be nowadays using HTTPS. And even if they are, there are still attacks that we'll cover at a later date, like man in the middle attacks, where you can still attempt to attack a, uh, a website and, you know, for example, by stripping the encryption out and using, a, you know, um, a new certificate to build a, a new encryption um, um, connection, for example. Um, although if you're using, um, if you're using certificate authorities correctly and you're only trusting the right people, then that should be difficult to pull off. Um, but you can still just strip out all the encryption. Um, as an attacker. So if you can get some JavaScript running in someone's web browser, in someone's website, then you can steal their cookies because JavaScript can read and write cookies. So if you manage to find a cross-site scripting attack uh, on a website or a cross-site request forgery, on a website, then you can end up being able to steal people's cookies. Uh, and these are topics we'll come back to later, but it's important to understand now that getting access to the ability to run code inside someone else's website, um, even if it's just on one person's web browser, but inside their web browser on that website, you get some JavaScript to load, that JavaScript can steal a session cookie and then, you know, the attacker can um, access their accounts. So there are securities in place on cookies and we'll talk about what some of those are now. So a server can't set a cookie for a different domain. So, you know, Google can only set go um, cookies for Google's own websites. Um, so for google.co.uk, for example. So only when you visit their website, um, they can set cookies for that. Um, keeping in mind what I said before about third-party cookies, so the way they kind of get around that is by um, having a some JavaScript, for example, that runs on Google's um, uh, like address, but gets loaded from a different website site. So that website says, oh yeah, and also includes some stuff from Google. And because the server's saying includes some stuff from Google, Google gets to have their cookies as well. Um, now when a cookie's set, it can be set to the entire web server so that every page that gets loaded from that web server also gets the cookies and gets sent the cookies. Or you can specify a directory, like a subdirectory on that server so that only when you visit things within um, like a staff directory, will certain cookies get sent along to you know to the server? Um, you can set secure option for for cookies, which means that they only get transmitted over HTTPS. Um, and to avoid that problem of being sent in clear text, you can say, okay, well this cookie should only ever be sent when we've got a secure connection with the server. Um, still possible for man in the middle attacks, but you know we'll cover those things later. Um, you can set HTTP only, which means that it's not available to JavaScript, that it just gets sent to the server, which can protect against some forms of cookie theft from JavaScript. You can also set same site, um, so that it's only sent um, when requests originate from the domain to stop things like third-party um, cookie type, type use, but usually third-party cookies are used when you want, um, want to share that information across domains. Um, and you can set the, the path, which is what I just mentioned. So some attacks. 
against session IDs is you could try and brute force it. Um, so if the session ID is guessable, then um, then your session mechanism you know can be broken by an attacker. For example, if your session ID cookie is literally just a username, then that's going to be horribly insecure because someone else can just guess someone's username and they've got access to their account if that's all you're using. So if you, um, you know, a really bad session management solution might be, are you who you, you know, you prompt them for a password and if they get it right, then you just set a session um, to be, okay, um, username cookie equals uh, the cliff, for example. And then every time I visit that website, that would be all it took to, for me to say that I am who I say I am. If I could see that was the case, I could guess, well, okay, there might be a user called admin, and I just set it to admin, and I might find that I'm logged in as admin on that server. Um, even if it is like a random or a pseudo-random um, ID, if it's too short, so less than something like 128 bits, then I might just be able to brute force it and just guess every single one until I get access to an account. So for example, if a session ID is just a number, um, that is like an integer, a small integer, then I could just guess what it is. Um, so anything that's low entropy, so if it's not very random or it can be predicted like dictionary words, for example, then I could try attacking that. Um, the session ID itself shouldn't contain anything sensitive. Um, it should really just be random, uh, like a good random number, the server sets, um, and then it just gets saved in the web client and just gets sent along and the server knows who that relates to. Some other bad um, things might just be like, it could be something like the a username that's been um, encoded, say for example, using Base64 uh, Base or something like that, would be a terrible solution. It might look secure to someone who doesn't know anything about it. They'll look at the cookie and it just looks like something kind of random, but actually all it is is a username that's been encoded. Again, that is um, something to look for when you're auditing the security of a website, try and figure out how does their session management work um, and you know are there any potential security problems or ways you could guess uh, session IDs. Another kind of clever attack against session IDs is a session fixation attack, which is where the attacker manages to set a session ID. So if a web server doesn't actually give you a new session ID when you authenticate and just says, <clears throat> allows you to spec the client to say, here's my session ID, and they authenticate it and say, okay, well, that session ID is this user. Then you might have an attacker that's able to basically set your session ID um, so that they know the session ID in advance, which means that once you've logged in, well, they already know the session ID, so they've logged in too. Um, so, in the next video, I'm going to talk about some defenses against um, some of these kinds of attacks.